On the jobs market in the United States, things do look to be getting better, but it's a long road to recovery. 779,000, three quarters of a million Americans filed new jobless claims last week. Third week in a row, high number, but it is falling. You can see it on the screen there. The CEO of EY, uh, Carmen DeCibio, is with me now. Good to have you, sir. I appreciate it. So, it, it is interesting because we're at this, this juncture where vaccines are get, uh, will, will eventually will start making things look better, but the underlying economics are still very difficult. What are you hearing from your clients? Richard, it's great to be here. Uh, what we're hearing is really all our clients are getting poised for a very substantial recovery. But the recovery really won't happen till the second half of the year. As vaccines are rolled out, we're really going to be into you know the May June time frame where we really see uh, things changing. And then uh, there is there is a lot of hope for the second half of the year. Uh, there's some concerns around a K-shaped recovery. But if you look at interest rates, if you look at uh, you know liquidity in the markets, uh, and frankly, we just did our capital conference barometer where we interview over 2,400. C-suite CEOs and C-suite executives, and they're very bullish on the second half of the year. 50% uh, of the people said that uh, they're going to do an acquisition this year, wow. uh, which is which is high considering uh, what where we've been. And um, and 65% said that they will make major investments in technology and di digitization of their entire organization. So, I think everyone is poised for the second half of the year. But to your point. It is slow in terms of the vaccine roll so, rollouts in many other countries. So how do you prepare for it? Uh, to any of our viewers around the world, SMEs, uh, senior management, C-suites watching now, they think, oh, well, there you go. that EOI chap was rather good. He said things are going to get better. <laughs> uh, but he didn't tell us what we had to do to prepare for it. So tell them that bit. Yeah, so that piece, Richard, I think right now uh, any company is really re-looking at their strategy. And what do they need to do? What do they need to invest in organic, inorganic going forward? Uh, and so many of them are looking, as I said before, at technology. You know, only 25% of companies worldwide had really a digitized supply chain. And they now they all realize that they, their supply chains right. have to be much more digitized. So they're looking at that. They're looking at their talent. Uh, and this goes all across a long-term value strategy, you know, in terms of their clients, their people and society in general. But when you look at talent, you know, are they attracting the best talent? And how are they going to attra attract right. the best talent? Are they attracting a diverse set of talent? And that that's incredibly important. So right now, companies are really looking at their longer term strategy and where they need to be. Taxation is going up probably in the United States some at some point, whether Joe Biden gets his full amount uh, that, uh, that, that he, he, he wishes. Um, but taxation is going up. Um, should we be concerned about corporate taxation rising? It arguably came down too much. Joe Stiglitz on this program yesterday was making the point that it's still very low compared to international standards. Yeah, so I think uh, our belief on taxation in the United States is that it will go on onto the table on the agenda, but not right now. Right now, the Biden administration is very focused on COVID, as you have seen. Um, and we think probably later in the year or potentially next year, it would go on to the agenda. But it will go on to the agenda really looking for any kind of tax increase to pay for something like infrastructure. So there would be a deal to be made. Um, I don't, you know, Joe, President Biden has said 28% corporate tax rate. I think it might be something lower than that, but with a deal to pay for something like infrastructure would be our view. But it would be at the earliest in the second, you know, in the second part of this year, early part of next year. The president uh, gave a speech. Uh, I'm not sure whether you were able to hear it this morning, uh, this afternoon, uh, on foreign policy. The idea of America is back. Uh, he then went on to talk about diplomacy is back. But this concept of America is back. Um, do your international clients looking back at the United States, do they still sort of say to you, what were you doing? And well, we still don't trust you or we're not sure. No, our clients are happy uh, in terms of what President Biden has been saying. They want the United States back uh, into all the trade agreements. 
Obviously, he's announced that the U the U.S. will join the Paris Accord again, and uh, and that and that's one area, Richard. Climate is something that is top of the agenda for the Biden administration, and frankly, is at the top of the agenda for our clients as well. Uh, we just finished a week in virtual Davos, and that was by far what was talked about the most uh, in terms of just what companies are thinking about a sustainable future. We at EY actually came out with an announcement a couple of weeks ago or what, like last week that we are going to be mm -hmm. net zero by 2025 and we're actually going to be carbon negative from 2021 from now we were carbon neutral last year and that's one of the most aggressive can I, net can zero I just interrupt you can I just interrupt sure. you um, on, on that because uh, and I'm not den denying or decrying your, your what you say but so every company now is 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 telling us the world we're going to be carbon neutral by X date in the future zero carbon this carbon that I have difficulty understanding a what it means B is it worth it and C am I just being flim flammed by some by 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 gobbledygook yeah that's fair enough and uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be on long enough to explain it all <laughs> but but net zero really is what people should be striving for, because that doesn't just mean that you're buying offsets to offset your carbon. That means that you're actually reducing your carbon right. emissions. And that's right out of the Paris Accord. And so we, our announcement is we're going to be net zero by 2025. For us, our carbon emissions are mostly air travel. And to get there, we're going to reduce our air travel by 35% by 2025. Now, you might say, how do you do that? And being very practical, we obviously have learned through the pandemic and we've yep. learned how to operate you know, virtually. So for us, we're expecting our client travel to not to maybe be down five, 10 percent, but our internal travel to be down as high as 50 percent. I can so hear that I can I can hear your colleagues kissing goodbye to their elite status. Uh, but, but, but all in the all in the best interests of the environment. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Great to see you, Richard. And we'll talk again soon. Uh, and we're hopefully, we'll see. You. Hopefully, we'll talk before uh, we get together in um, Singapore, which of course is now in August, not May. At WEF. Good to see you, sir.